Welcome to the morning prayer meeting. If you have the Bible, look at the Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11 to 20. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11 to 20. I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I set out during the night with a few men. I had not told anyone who, what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There was no mark with me except the one I was riding on. Can you see that Nehemiah is the one to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem within 52 days? That is a miracle. Within 52 days, uh, God used the Nehemiah to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. It's amazing. And then, especially, he wanted to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem when he went to the Jerusalem in the night time. In the night time. Why? Why go to the night time? He, he does this very secretly. He's like a spy. And then, actually, he said, and God, yeah, God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. You know, you receive something in your heart, and uh, you have to do it very wisely, very, very wisely. Yeah, when you're working for Jesus, don't work in foolishly, foolishly. There, then, then you know, it's amazing. This man, and Nehemiah, he led by the Holy Spirit. How he built the kingdom of the law, how he built the wall of Jerusalem, and then actually Nehemiah, Nehemiah is the one to using by God. Look at verse thirteen. By night I went out uh, through the valley gate and toward the uh, jackal well and the dung gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down and its gate which he had been destroyed by fire. Do you understand? All of Jerusalem destroyed by fire. It's terrible happening. Destroyed by fire. Do you know, if you are a mighty man and woman of God, when you see something, oh, demon attacked, how do you feel? You feel is uh, very disturbing. But this man, Nehemiah, he saw everything. He saw everything. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 14. Then I moved on toward uh, the fountain gate and the king's pool, and there was uh, not enough room for my mouth to get through, which is uncomfortable. Do you know small animal here on the lighting on there, but not enough room. So I went up the valley by night, examined the world. Finally, I turned back and then re entered to the valley gate. Can you see that? In the night time, he's just moving at his fire. You know, when you do the work of the law, sometimes two times, um, yeah, there is uh, obstacles, you know, disturbing, and then difficulties. But you have to be wise. Be wise. Like this man and Nehemiah. And look at verse uh, uh, 16. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing, because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or priests or nobles or officials or any others who would be doing the work. Because we have the Bible in our hand, we know why he go there in the night time. We know why Nehemiah he doing like his spy. Not many people, a few people. He didn't say to priests, he didn't say to nobles, he didn't say to officials, he just do it secretly. To what? To do the kingdom of God. To build the kingdom of God. This man is a very, very wise man. And this, this wisdom comes from uh, Almighty God, not from him. And you can see continually. And look at the verse 17, Nehemiah 2, 17 say, Then I say to them, you see the throw we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. Uh, it gate uh, have been burned with a fire. Come, 
let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and it will no longer be in disgrace. Finally, he announced it. Why we are in the night time? Why you are doing like this? To prepare. Prepare is very, very important. If you do not prepare for future, <laughs> your life is ruined. Do you know today's life is a fruit of your yesterday? Can I say again? If you prepare well right now for your future, your future is much blessed. Do you understand? If you sow the seed into your body with the drugs, what happens? Your mind is gone. You become a drug addict. You waste your time. Do you understand? If you sow the seed with the word of God into your soul, yeah, last year, even early this year, good for you, good for your future. Sister, uh, uh, you know, since uh, last year, New Year's Eve, Sister Alicia came, and then since then you continue to come and then worshiping God together. I saw some difference. I saw the progress in your life. I saw the you know, amazing transformation. Do you like on it? You like on it by yourself. Your family name knows that. Why? Because you already sowing the good seed, yeah, in your life. Everything is a preparation. You come yesterday. Yeah, you s you prepare to become missionary in in UK in Wales. Do you understand? I don't know when when did you come last year to here. September. He came in September, and uh, we met uh, Brother Choi, and then he played the guitar, and then. Now, can you imagine God is open the door and now he's a missionary in, in Wales? Isn't that wonderful? And he went back to Korea to prepare and come back here. Everything is in preparation. This man, Nehemiah, he prepared very well. Very well. If you're a father or a mother, prepare for <coughs> your children. Yeah, prepare. How can you prepare for your children? You still play the corn? Yeah, today you can play today. <laughs> to prepare father sowing the seed for their own children this preparation best preparation is uh, the word of the law before you you know go to work before you do something today come to the word of the law yeah this is best preparation yeah if you do not prepare God cannot use in you do you understand if you well prepare for your future God can use in you. Yeah? Look at this uh, scripture, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. He already announced it. He say now. He check everything. Now he announced it. What do you announce here? Now I come to Jerusalem for what? Rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. This is around the BC uh, 444. Can you imagine? 2000. Uh, 400 years ago, this man, Nehemiah, rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. Do you know that Jewish people, they went to Babylon and they returned to home, first, second, and third. Jerubabel, God used to Jerubabel to rebuild the, uh, Jerusalem. <coughs> Look at verse 18. Verse 18 is very important. Why? Because uh, this is uh, his fate. The Nehemiah's fate. <coughs> Verse 18. Uh, I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me. <coughs> Can you say to me? The grace hands of God. Sorry. Grace hand of my God upon me. Can you say? Once again. Raise the hand of my God upon me. How many of you know the gracious hands of God? This man, he knows. He said, he told all the people about the gracious hand of God upon me. He said, like this. When the gracious hand of God upon you, you are no more same. You start a new life. Please pray unto God, Lord, let your gracious hand 
comes on me. This man, he say, I will rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, not by my power, not by my strength, not by my ability or my wisdom. No, nothing, nothing to do with me. He say, gracious hand of my God upon me, and I will do it. You and me need a gracious hand of God every day. Can you say amen? amen? If you don't have the gracious hand of God, you're like, finish. Gracious hand of God comes on you and let God use you mightily. Let God be with you. Can you keep it and uh, look at the, uh, Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with thee. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do you understand? I will uphold you with what? With my righteous right hand. Not left hand. Righteous right hand. I will uphold you. I will hold you for you. I'll keep you. This man, he knows the gracious hand of his God. And that is how he announced it. Just to let you know that the gracious hand of God upon me, therefore I can do it. Can you say amen? amen? I can do all things through Jesus who gave me strength. Same things. Gracious hand of my God upon me, therefore I can do it. But the king had to say it to me also. Do you understand? He said, God already didn't open the door for me. And then king, yeah, he already supported for me. And they replied, L and then people, do you know what they say? People say, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. And people, they participate. In the beginning, he prepared, he checked the night time and he announced it and the people say let us let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and all the people participate it's not wonderful to do the will of Father in heaven last night one, one pastor came to my house and they saw how you guys uh, you know you prepare for the evening service all these things and they say to me, oh, first of all, without you, you, I mean, your congregation doing very well for the glory of the Lord. I say, praise God. Also, yesterday I was in the, I went to the dentist, the, the meaning with the one tooth. And then I saw the, the, the live video, what you're doing, and I received the report. 89 people gave their life to Jesus. Can you imagine? In, in, in certain, normally, we never seen in certain, because we used to preaching in certain. You know, very hard. One soul come to Lord Jesus on the street is, is almost a you know, miracle in, in certain area. Very hard. But 89 souls yesterday. Praise God for that. Yeah, that is God. And then people, participate. People build the kingdom of God. This is a very good attitude. Some people uh, not for me. You do it, not for me. That kind of people. And you see the name I will see continually. And verse 19, you can see this kind of verse 19. But when Sambalat, can you see that? Sambalat the uh, 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 Horonite. And then Tabia yeah, Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 19. You can see the Tabia and Tavia and Sambala, the Amorite <coughs> officials, and then Geshem, the Arab, heard about it. They mocked and they ridiculed us. They mocking. You know, when you, when you build the kingdom of God, definitely enemy not very happy. How do you know you build the kingdom of God or not? If uh, there is some opposite party, if a demon try to attack you, you are doing very well actually. If a demon not attack you, if not demon despise you, if you think about that, 
it is the will of God or not. Because they knew the will of Father in heaven to reveal the world of Jerusalem. And there is a Samara and Tavia and um, uh, Geshem. These kind of people, they mock Nehemiah, even Ezra, and then they ridicule them. And they mocking, they laughing. What is this you are doing? They ask. What you are doing? Can you imagine? They don't support him for Nehemiah. They just mock him, despise them. What you are doing? That kind of attitude. Terrible. Are you rebelling against the king? <laughs> Sorry, rebelling against the king? And look, what did you say? Nehemiah answered, verse 20. I answered them by saying, The God of heaven will give us success. Full stop. And he just announced it. He just gave the statement. The God of heaven will give us success. That's it. I know what I'm doing. You can do whatever you like. But I don't need to listen to you guys. And then we, his servant, will start rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. You have nothing to do with us. Go away. Do you understand? Nehemiah is a very straightforward person. The God of Israel, God of heaven, <coughs> will give us a success. You against us, you despise us, you mock us, <coughs> keep doing. That's your job. I don't need to listen to you. Have you seen the train? I mean, long times ago, very in the old style steam train or whatever train. And train. <coughs> They start, and they go forward. But <coughs> let's say over 10 or 20 dogs biting. Train, stop it, stop it, stop it. Do you think train, train stop? <laughs> biting continues. I go forward. Do you understand? For you and me, which side? Sambala, Tavia, and Geshem, that kind of side? Or side of Nehemiah. It's up to you. It's up to you. Some people mocking. Some people despise. But Nehemiah never give up. Never give up. Look at the Ezra. Ezra is a people of Nehemiah. Ne in Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4 verse 3 to 5. <coughs> God used the Nehemiah and Ezra. Ezra is a teacher of the law. He's a priest or a teacher. Well, look at Ezra chapter 4, verse 3. But Jerubbabel, Jeshua, and the rest of the head of the families of the Israel answered, You have no part with us in the building a temple to our God. We alone will build it for the Lord. God of Israel and King Cyrus, the king of Persia, commanded us. Do you understand? God used the Jerubbabel to rebuild the um, Solomon Temple. We call the Jerubbabel Temple. Do you understand? First temple in Israel, King Solomon Temple. Second temple is Jerubbabel Temple. Yeah? Of course, it's, uh, you know, around 2,000 years ago, the King Herod, um, you know, just little bit uh, rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. But second temple is uh, the Jerubbabel Temple. And then what they say, we alone will build the, this uh, temple of God for God, for the Lord our God. And then verse 4, the people around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. You see, they want discourage and make them afraid. Always there is some enemy try to attack the people of God, people, people of Judah. People of Judah, they don't discourage. So many times, so many times, 
people discourage me so many hundred thousand times if I listen today <coughs> I'm not in here today I go forward <coughs> listen what God say I just obey look at the verse 4 sorry verse 5 and they hired a counselor to work against them and uh, first uh, their plan during the entire reign of uh, Cyrus king of Persia down to the reign of uh, uh, Darius king of Persia enemy continuously against the work of God but never give up Nehemiah he revealed the wall of Jerusalem even the enemy Sambala Tavia and then this uh, uh, Keshem, this kind of people strongly against the Nehemiah, strongly against the work of God. He never give up, never give up. And then Nehemiah say to them, you guys, uh, you are not sure in the Jerusalem, which you mean. You don't get any, 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 any blessing. Blessing of the Lord let the finish from your life. That kind of uh, announcement. Any claim or history to write to you, sorry, go away. We have to be strong in the last day. When you build the kingdom of God, Satan always uh, discourage you, despise you, always uh, against you. But never give up. What you need? This man, Nehemiah claimed two things this morning according to the scripture. <coughs> what? The gracious hand of my God upon me. Can you say it to me? Gracious hand of my God upon me. Gracious hand of my God upon me. This number one, he proclaimed it. Number two, he say, the God of heaven will give us success. Can you say it to me? The God of heaven. And then he finished the, you know, cut job. He finished the, the work of the Lord. Same thing for you and me. Know the will of Father in heaven. Yeah? You know the will of Father in heaven. Just obey. Just do it. Good for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. God used the Nehemiah to reveal the world of Jerusalem. Also, thank you. You used the Zerubbabel to build the, uh, <coughs> the temple. But there is some enemy. But this man, Nehemiah, he proclaimed that the gracious hand of my God upon me. Therefore, I can do it by his gracious hand of God. And he proclaimed that the God of heaven will give us a success. He always proclaimed that, not me, not our team, but God is the one. The God of Israel, God of heaven, will give us a success. Father, we give the all the glory and honor and power. Our church is prepared to get the bigger promises. Lord, open the gate of heaven. When God opens the gate of heaven, no one shut the door. Open the gate of heaven for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.